Hi and welcome to the Surface Navy Association's National Symposium here in Washington DC. I am Xavier Vavasor from NavalNews.com. This is our first event of the year and actually our first event ever as we just launched last week. If you enjoy our coverage, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website NavalNews.com. My name is Dave Hart, Rear Admiral, retired U.S. Navy, and I'm the chairman of the Symposium Committee for the Surface Navy Association. As some of you may know, we've conducted an annual symposium now in our 30th year here in Washington, D.C. We've had wonderful growth and great attendance. This year, our theme is ready, agile, and focused, specifically on owning the fight, which sounds a little bit like a catchword, but the real implication behind that is getting down the basics, preparation for, and accountability by our commanding officers afloat. The admirals so far this morning who have spoken on active duty have made this a very clear message to the audience, and it will be the theme throughout the course of the next three days. Hi, team. Good to see you again. Great to see you, Renee. A new Surface Navy Association's uh, National Symposium and a new frigate design. Can you tell us all about it? Uh, sure. So as we've discussed, we've tuned up our LCS parent design to meet the needs of the Navy's uh, future frigate. Um, it's been a, a little bit of a iterative process with the Navy going back and forth on the concept design phase. We're getting to the point now where the requirements are firming up and we're able to actually get a model that probably meets 90% of the requirements for the Navy, not knowing yet what the final answer will be. Um, first of all, we've changed the propulsion plan um, because the requirement for this ship is 26 to 28 knots, 26 threshold, 28 objective. Uh, we changed from water jets and, and gas turbines to diesel engines and uh, controllable pitch propeller. Um, so starting at the bow, uh, you can see we've moved uh, RAM, which is a requirement now. We used to have CRAM aft on the 05 deck. Uh, we've moved the RAM launcher forward. Uh, it's now integrated with the ESA radar. EASR was a requirement. Uh, moving a little fur further back, um, you can see that we've repurposed uh, some of the flight deck space to create the fantail aft. Having a fantail aft gives us a place to install our VLS launcher, a vertical launch system. Um, the Navy required 32 cells. And for a small surface combatant, again, that was a pretty large requirement. Um, we used to have eight cells aft and eight cells forward. When the Navy said 32 cells, we said, okay, we're gonna have to put that aft. So we consumed a lot of the space uh, available for uh, the VLS launcher. Um, you can see the ship is a little bit longer than, uh, than what we had submitted before with our uh, RFI. Uh, so about 10 frames longer, about 30 feet or so. And what that did was it gave us the displacement that can support these other systems. Um, we have variable death sonar on here, we have lightweight tow. Uh, you could also see aft, we've got eight um, OTH missiles. They're the new um, Navy uh, strike missiles. Um, what you don't see uh, behind two screens are rib boats. We used to have the uh, uh, rib boat on the port side, port quarter. Now we have two rib boats, uh, one on the uh, starboard side, one on the port side for redundancy. So the captain of the ship can get a lead on either side if he needs to. Um, most of the other things are um, relatively easy to do. We've left some topside uh, arrangeable area for other antennas the Navy may want to put in there. We do have, as you pointed out, some space available aft if the Navy had other systems we want to put on. One particular place I'll point out is the 05 level aft, where we have concentrated space weight power for future systems. There was a, uh, a mandate that we have kind of a special project, uh, maybe a laser weapon, but someplace aft, and that's where we would put that weapon. It's already uh, foundated and has uh, the space available for it. Today at SNA, what we're showcasing is our uh, DART mission system, a variable depth sonar, which the Navy now refers to as the AN-SQS-62. So the DART mission system was uh, initially specifically designed for the, for the littoral combat ship. The number one requirement that they had for the littoral combat ship for the variable depth sonar was they wanted a system that would meet all of the acoustic and hydrodynamic requirements, but be significantly lower in weight. 
And so our mission system is significantly lower in weight than all of the, than all of the previous systems. Um, it was specifically designed for the Toro combat ship, but it has applicability to the future frigate and to other Navy platforms. So the uniqueness of our system uh, really is threefold. The first is that the transmit system is an all-digital, state-of-the-art system. So we literally have the capability to transmit any type of waveform that the U.S. Navy would, would, would want to transmit. The second thing is the source and the receiver are both co-located in depth. So, they're all, so the source and receiver are all part of what's called a single tow system. So unlike conventional systems that have one tow for the receiver and one tow for the transmitter, here the source and receiver are on the same tow cable. And then the third feature is um, this system was specifically designed to be able to be towed at greater depths and greater speeds than all of its predecessors. Um, the ANSQS-62, um, the 30th of November 2018, was, uh, was delivered to the U.S. Navy. Um, the, it uh, met all of its requirements and it is now installed on a white ship uh, doing some end-to-end -end testing in the uh, Autech test range. So what's next for the program is we're going through uh, testing right now at Autech until the end of January, beginning of February time frame. Um, after that, the, the system will come off the ship. We'll go through a, a quick refurbishment and, and it will uh, be turned over to the Littoral Combat Ship Squadron. And in May of this year, they will start the installation of the system on board the LCS-3, which is USS Fort Worth. They'll go through an installation period from May till about June or July, and then they'll start developmental testing and operational testing later this summer. So in May, the Navy selected Naval Strike Missile as the Over the Horizon Weapon System program. Uh, we're very excited about this. Um, it's an opportunity to create jobs in the U.S. You know, Raytheon partnered with Kongsberg to bring Naval Strike Missile into the U.S. Um, our partnership with Kongsberg goes over 50 years. So we got a couple months uh, under our belt. You know, we got the award in late May. Um, we did get an additional FY19 award towards the end of the year. Um, we're, we're starting up our supplier base in the U.S. Uh, we just had a supplier conference in, uh, I think it was November of, of this last year, just a couple months ago. Um, we're really excited about bringing some more content to the U.S. So that's, that's what we're working today. NSM brings a uh, highly capable anti-ship uh, weapon to the U.S. inventory, uh, something that um, the LCS can use, something the LC LCS needs. It's a non-developmental item. It's something that's ready now uh, that we can put in, in the fleet uh, as soon as possible. Yeah, in July of this year, we had a successful shot off the Army PLS. It's a palletized load system. Um, it was off of a truck. Uh, we hit the USS Racine, um, so it showed that we can launch from numerous platforms. It also um, showed that there's a potential capability from a coastal defense perspective. Uh, NSM brings a multi-mission capability to the warfighter. Not only can it hit maritime targets, it also has a land attack capability. Uh, we just declared uh, early operational capability on the B-1B Lancer. Uh, we delivered 10 missiles to the United States Air Force. Uh, next month we will uh, start operational testing on F-18EF and uh, the Navy will expect to declare early operational capability sometime in the early summer. Other announcements is that uh, we are in Lot 1 production uh, right now, delivering missiles to the Air Force and the Navy. Uh, we also just concluded uh, a Lot 2 award for 53 missiles. Uh, and we also have another exciting project going with the United States Marine Corps called Nemesis, Navy Marine Expeditionary Ship Interdiction System, uh, to integrate LARASM on one of the Marine Corps' uh, mobile vehicles. So we've just delivered uh, phase one of our uh, OTA to the Marine Corps, which included some engineering studies and also uh, some rough order magnitude cost estimates. Phase two will commence uh, likely in March. Uh, and then we'll develop a couple of prototypes and then we'll test them uh, in spring of 2020.